welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm taping this Thursday morning to keep the aesthetic of the morning, so a lot of the news and a lot of the stuff I am talking about is about 24 hours older than it would have been if I would have been live on Friday. So anyways, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I'm here to talk to you guys about what's happening this weekend. Um, MCAT programming, uh, big thing, um, the city council, There's there was no city council this week. Uh, they took a, a bye week, um, but I do have some more information about MCPS, which I'll talk about later in the show. But first, I'm going to be talking about a little bit of a news rundown. Um, big news that's happening in the city of Missoula as we're going into warmer weather. Uh, we're seeing uh, some temperatures are getting to the rise into the 80 degree temperature in uh, the, this weekend and on to next week. Uh, temperatures are on the rise, which have a lot, of, have some people concerned about the flood warning. Uh, high in the mountains, a lot of the snow runoff uh, with increased rain that we had an inch in less than an hour last week. Um, a couple things also uh, is that our MCAT studio, we are officially out of there by the end of this week. So by the time you're watching this, um, MCAT will pretty much be out of our offices by uh, the weekend. Um, because at the end of the month is May 31st. And speaking of May 31st, MCPS will be hosting um, their uh, first graduation at Sealy Lake. It's the Sealy Swan High School. And so MCAT will be live streaming that and only that for the MCPS high schools. Um, and that could be uh, one in the afternoon. And if you can't go, it'll be live streaming on our Facebook, YouTube, and whatnot for you guys to uh, be able to watch. So check that out and more. So here's the news rundowns. And as we are getting closer and closer to phase two, which is kicking off a Monday, June 1st, Monday, June 1st is going to be the big day where phase two is going to happen. And one of the bigger changes that are happening as well is that restaurants can operate at 75% capacity. So it's getting really close to that um, kind of like status quo of what Montana is all about. But right now, um, the governor is uh, stressing that this is all moving accordingly with the plan of how Montana is keeping um, uh, on, on good track with containing the virus, which is uh, at more than uh, 400 people were confirmed. There were 16 deaths in Montana, but so far there haven't been too many new reported cases in the, just the last couple days and over the weekend. So uh, one of the things is that the new normal, as the state wrote in their phase two directives, are to individual responsibilities, good hygiene, Always wash your hands. Um, face masks might be a regular, will may have to be a regular thing if you find yourself in crowded areas. Um, but they're not stressed in terms of if you're in a group of people that you know and have been around. But if you aren't able to keep that six feet social distance, you're not. Uh, you should not be gathering with more than 50 people. Uh, maybe if you're at a park and there's a lot of people there, um, you might. You might need to do like a quick head count and if you feel as though that you, if you, just a lot of times it's all about how you feel, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel that you're not able to uh, social distance with everyone, it's it's a wise decision to kind of pass on that particular day. Uh, there's a lot of trails, a lot of uh, opportunities to be out and about, um, uh, but in terms of like playgrounds and uh, parks and recreation, that's another big thing as well. Uh, Parks and Rec don't necessarily wash a lot of their equipment, so you might want to just think about that in terms of going to uh, playgrounds with your children. So, other than that, uh, big things happen with MCPS. Uh, Washington Grizzly Stadium has uh, allowed, uh, well, has uh, given the opportunity for MCPS to host their graduation for all the high schools, including Willard on Thursday. Um, and then they're going to be having all three high schools back to back to back like they would normally do it every year in the Dahlberg Arena um, within the Adams Center. One of the things that are uh, happening, and I'll talk a little bit more about this as well, is that uh, the stadium can house up to 25,203 people. And But what they're going to plan on using it for is they're going to be... Uh, Ideally, they're going to have about 250 students per graduation, and each uh, guest is going to have two people per um, student. So they're looking at maybe 500 people in the stands, so there's more than enough room for uh, to be able to provide that major social distancing. But also, I'll talk a little bit more about how they're uh, tracking people in case there is a spread, another second coming of the coronavirus. So um, as of Wednesday, the virus has uh, made its way through the U.S., and about 6% chance of killing people who get the illness. So it's up from what originally was 2% at the beginning of this, um, what people are referring to as more of like a kind of a flu virus, but it's getting a lot more traction in terms of that. According to the mortality uh, uh, analysis by Job Hopkins University, coronavirus 
Resource Center, about 6% of nearly 1.7 million people who have tested positive, it, positive for COVID-19 in the U.S. have now succumbed to the disease. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control has noti noticed that the disease trends affects more men than women. Uh, for age groups uh, up to 75 years of age, about twice as many men and boys have been killed by COVID-19 as of women and girls. Um, access to uh, medical facilities have affected more of the risk population who fall below the poverty line. In Arizona, Native Americans account for 5% of the population, but um, um, comprise of nearly 17% of the state's uh, COVID-19 fatalities. Um, there's a lot of those trends happening in many other places as well. Um, as we get into the summer, the disease is still across the U.S. Health experts warn that the U.S. coronavirus death rate can climb much higher with approximately 140,000 deaths by August that many of them have been predicting. Uh, currently, many deceased have not been able to uh, have uh, funerals to give families uh, that, that have lost folks closure. Uh, the last couple of months have been hard, especially for many folks in the African-American communities across the U.S. There have been a lot of uh, um, interesting things with people being killed, um, senseless violence and all this stuff. And one of the biggest things that's happening just in this week is that in Minneapolis, the National Guard has been called to bring order to a South uh, Minneapolis, the southern part of Minneapolis in Minnesota, after a video emerge of a police officer with his knee pressing against George Floyd's neck while a man was, well, the man was in custody. The video showed the officer on his knee in Floyd's neck for nearly eight minutes. Floyd was hear, heard pleading with the officer, telling him he couldn't breathe. He later died at the hospital Monday evening. Riots broke out in the southern part of, of the Minnesota city with looting and reports of stabbings, armed citizens, um, shootings of uh, folks, and, and they've gathered, uh, and of course armed citizens um, have gathered at local strip malls um, to protect it from looters and to help de-escalate the situation. And they said that they agree with the protesters, just not the looters. And uh, of course, a lot of this is interesting because um, more information came earlier morning say that it started with about 20, 30 uh, silent protesters that were at the uh, Union Avenue where Floyd's death, uh, where the, the incident occurred. And uh, counter protesters showed up and they began yelling at each other. Hours later, uh, many things started to escalate and people started diluting the local target in the area, which resulted in a lot of uh, things going back and forth tear gas, police in riot gear, uh, verbal bullets, and all that stuff is happening as well. And so, uh, Governor of the state of Minnesota, Tim Waltz, tweeted, Our state, watch. George Floyd's uh, humanity get erased. Our feelings of anger, anguish, and disillusionment are justified. Of course, uh, Walt spoke more and uh, de-escalated the situation, encouraged people to encourage peaceful protests only. Of uh, And these are uh, an ongoing situation, uh, for sure. This is one of those uh, major tipping points that has been escalating, and a lot of tensions have been growing as well. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about that. Um, as we go into the weekend. But coming back to Missoula, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, what's happening more locally here in Missoula as well. Um, more rain, warmer weather, uh, nicer days for sure are ahead of us. Um, but without further ado, I do wanna talk about some of the new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT. Uh, MCAT is still going to be uh, providing programs for the community. We've been doing a lot of uh, Zoom meetings and providing uh, people the means to connect to others. And one big thing I also wanted to mention is that Arts Missoula, if you are part of the First Friday deal, is that Arts Missoula is trying to host a virtual gallery tour. So if you have art or any kind of uh, thing that you want to express, uh, and you can contact artsmissoula.com. Go to artsmissoula.com and contact them into... Uh, if you have any art or any kind of anything that you want to kind of show off for First Friday, which is Missoula's premier art uh, gathering, they are trying to do a virtual art tour. So if you're interested and you want to show some of the art stuff as well, MCAT is doing a, um, a com compilation of art in Missoula and being able to provide uh, an outlet for people to express themselves without necessarily having large groups gather in certain areas. There, they are a couple of galleries are going to be open, but for the most part, the event, it, the uh, first Friday event, is not going to be a huge social gathering for a lot of people. I heard that the Missouri Museum would not be open during first Friday of next week, so um, part of this is just a way for people to kind of 
show off their art. And if you're interested, you go to artsmissoula.com for more information uh, for the uh, virtual um, First Friday. All right, so without further ado, um, here are some of the programs going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some uh, streaming programs that are going to be uh, airing on MCAT as well. Uh, tunnels need to be dry to mine, and so they need to pump groundwater out to keep those tunnels dry. And in, in pumping out the groundwater, lower the water table. And the overlying rivers and streams that rely on that groundwater for a portion of their flows will be disconnected from that source of water. And so um, a particularly um, a concern during late summer and early fall when those streams are already experiencing low flows and they really rely on groundwater as a portion of their flows then. It's also a particularly vulnerable time for a lot of our native fish who are spawning at that particular time. That's why um, a bull trout um, is particularly an issue at this site. Um, so this and this little guy had um, a leg that hadn't quite developed the same way as the other one, and I believe that one was from birth. But um, the lady who brought him uh, I was told was one of the teachers in the school right near there and so I said what 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 are the issues what sh what needs to be done here and she said um, that we don't have enough supplies uh, the parents do not believe education is helpful so because it's you know the farming what would what does it matter if my kid goes to school you know and then um, the third one was actually that there is abuse and there are some situations in the environment that are hard to deal with as a teacher. So. Uh, but this is the time of year when um, city council uh, and administration start having um, strategic planning sessions. They kind of talk about what are our goals and, and you know, where do we, where, where do we need to, to put our revenue? And those needs kind of help uh, inform and guide our budget process and our budget requests. Um, usually in around April or May, the mayor uh, presents his executive budget to um, Missoula City Council. Uh, the way it is, the mayor um, creates the budget and he presents it to City Council and then City Council discusses it, adds things, removes things, whatever, and then um, we get you know, presentations on what all the departments are going to be doing. That happens throughout the summer. And then sometime in August is when the city council actually finally votes to adopt the budget. Welcome back. Now it's time for some pre-critic. Pre-critic is where I judge a movie based on whether I see it or not, or just kind of like I look at the poster and I just see the synopsis and I'm just like, this is exactly what you can expect from this. Lovebirds, or The Lovebirds. You have to add in the because when I typed in Lovebirds, it's like five different movies from five different countries just popped up from different years, and it's like, okay. And this one's more of a comedy, and uh, it's kind of like a buddy comedy where the, uh, okay, so... From the creators of those movies where you get caught up in a uh, corrupt scandal and now must decide whether or not to stay together to survive or break up and try it solo. This is basically a, a movie where two, uh, a couple who are together whose relationship is on the rocks and as a result uh, they decide to break up. But the outside world uh, comes right at their face in a, a little dose of reality where it's the idea that um, your... Uh, 
your breakup is not as big as the problems in the world kind of deal. And then you have a new perspective on your relationship. And without actually talking about it, your problems are solved. But you know how movies are. You know, they resolve situations, you know, in a tight amount of time. And that's kind of just kind of how it is. Um, so if you guys are interested in watching another run of the mill movies where you have two people who are uh, on the rocks but need a little more excitement in their lives just to re-spark their relationship, then watch The Lovebirds. Um, of course, if you're not happy with your current relationship, see therapy or open the lines of communication between the two of you. Um, uh, try taking a class together. Try uh, new things. Uh, don't necessarily try something that you want to do that your couple, that your uh, partner doesn't want to do. Uh, the good thing to try to do is try to do something both of you would never do, and then you can either like it together or hate it together. And yeah, I mean, it's a good way to bring people together by doing something you mutually hate together. Hey, it's interesting. All right, moving on. We got a streaming show that's going to be premiering uh, today on Friday. Uh, it's called Space Force. Steve Carell is back in a comedy series where, um, which kind of started off as like, you know, what if the military actually did like a space uh, a military branch? But then it actually started becoming more of a real thing in the real world. And they're just like, okay... <laughs> But I guess we'll just kind of continue doing the show. And then so basically the show dropped a trailer of um, from the show the same day that NASA or, NASA or the U U.S. Uh, government did a recruiting video for the Space Force. And people were just like, which one? Is this a joke or is this real? But uh, one thing's for sure is that the Space Force TV show got a lot more views than the actual uh, Space Force that they're recruiting for. <laughs> But anyways, watch a show where it's about a person who's just like, Space Force, that's stupid. Well, you're the man that's in charge. You wanted to be the big military guy with the big pants. I'm like, uh, okay. And then that's kind of what the show is based around. And they have other stars in it, too. John Malkovich is in it. He's a comedy guy in things that aren't uh, things. He's kind of gotten to that point where he's an old, grumpy man for uh, uh, comedy's sake. But anyways... Up next, we got Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. So remember that show, uh, The Mandalorian, the reason why people got Disney Plus, and also when the show was over, people dropped Disney Plus? Well, now let's watch a show that's about the show. Hey, people like uh, watching shows about watching shows. Why not? You know, YouTube reacts. People love that stuff. So why don't you get a glorified uh, docu-series about The Mandalorian, about the making of, and where you can be like, hey, that looks really cool. I wish I could do that, but definitely not because I don't have the money to do that. Oh well. So anyways, watch the movie, or uh, watch the show, or watch uh, the making of the show, and that's going to be on Disney+, Plus. or maybe they're just trying to um, vie for more people to subscribe to Disney+. Plus. But yay, streaming services are getting bigger and bigger as our time in quarantine is getting tighter and tighter, and our movies won't be coming out until sometime in July, so uh, movie theaters are allowed to open, but they're still trying to work th their way into opening the movie theaters, so there, there's that. All right. So that pretty much does it for my pre-critic. Um, if you guys are interested in watching those movies, great. If you're not, great too. It's up to you. Make a decision. Um, <laughs> um, I made a, a little bit of a longer dub and stuff for you guys. And this is the Pied Piper of Hamelin. I thought it was Hamlin, but there's an H-A-M-E in it. So the Pied Piper of Hamelin will be uh, dropping um, for you guys. Everyone, they can't shoot us all. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm sorry, my dear, but the we're in the middle of a staff meeting right now. This is very important. You have to listen to us. Hold on, let me get my coat. Oh, I remembered. Are you gonna do anything about the sharks? We're doing all we can. I didn't know there were sharks here in this place. There are no sharks here. We are landlocked, and besides, most of our rivers... I am not done talking. You have to do something. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Oh, whoopsie-daisy. Oh. Have we had enough of this? I am sick and I'm tired of all this stuff. We have a lot more problems than sharks around here. Whoa, whoa, watch out. You see? Regardless of landlocked, the sharks can get us from anywhere. Makes sense like to me, yeah. What are you gonna do? Now listen here, we have to do something. And we gotta do it fast, cause otherwise, the sharks are gonna get us all. Oh, what about Billy here? One can't just build more tables to stand on. We have to figure out how to get rid of these sharks before it's too late. Uh, well, I'm open to suggestions. 
What do you guys think? Uh, a, a, a town is only as strong as a village. And we have Billy over here who's seen Shark Week, so maybe he can enlighten us a little bit more about these shark infestations. So, uh, what do you think, Billy? What do you think we should do? Uh, Jeff, you start. Uh, hello, everyone. My name's Jeff. And, what are you well, going to do about these kids? They're throwing rocks all over at these people's windows. And what are you going to do about job security? And how come no one went to my dog's recital? What about the power of the press? We need more newspapers and who's going to gonna spread, spread it? The backs of the workers? My grandkids never come to visit me. I need new kinds of hats and shops. Yeah, come on, you need to do something. And new fashion line. New we can put fashion lines. in newspapers. All right, all right. You guys stop complaining. We have to solve one problem at a time. We'll start out with the sharks, and then we'll work our way to maybe some hats, because, you know, everyone could use a new hat and everything. And besides, there's only a few of us, but tons of little shark things come flying around. Becoming butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers, and you are just letting it all happen. It's all your fault. You can't expect us to solve your guys' individual problems. Well, get on out of here. I don't need this. Do you think we'll celebrate Christmas? The dirty old Scrooge won't let my dad come home. Oh, dear. I'm sure your dad's watching. What do you think, Uncle Gary? Hello, Gary. Yeah, I can, can you hear you just fine now. Quiet. Oh, please don't be cruel to the young boy. He has rickets. To make sure that there is plenty of jobs out here to provide people some form of income, but money should be put aside so they could be insured. So if there's any workplace accident, their family's taken care of. Can you not do that? It makes sense, does it yeah, not? Yeah, it makes sense, but I want my new hat. And I think everyone should get a free hat with a signing bonus as well. All right, all right, see what I can do. Get out of here. God, jeez. please. Oh, demands. Now don't you give me that look. I'm your king, or whatever. Well, that could have gone better, but it didn't. Well, what do you suggest we do, sire? <laughs> well, we can solve the shark problem, but the whole workers' right thing is going to be a whole nother mess. Ugh, I heard the Tsar got overthrown by all this guy. We are not the Tsar. We are of the people, by the people, and the people made me in charge. And you are my viceroy. And you are going to make sure... Oh, no worries. I'm going to make sure that you're going to uh, be king for as long as possible. Well, at least we're going to eat like kings. Oh, 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 man. Why are you quiet, you? I'm trying to figure things out for the people. Now, if I were everyone else, how would I solve the problem? Well, maybe I just uh, get a... F oh! I am over here. The heck's going Head on? Head a little bit more to the left. A huzzah! What, what? How did you get in here? I can solve your shark problem. No problem. I solve all sorts of problems. I, after all, have a Van Dyke on my face. <laughs> His tunic keeps riding up. Oh, my tunic may be short, but I am long in the heart. For I am here to solve your shark. I know that doesn't rhyme, but I am a good wordsmith. And besides, what do you have to lose? Oh, a lot. Well, I see that you do not trust what I'm trying to say, so I'm going to make this as simple as possible for you. By focusing on a singular problem, you will get the focus off of all other problems. And how do you go about doing oh, that? I'm so glad you asked. All right, you listen here. How can solving one problem can solve all the problems for me? You vilify the sharks. Well, sharks are mindless creatures. How do you go about doing that with those creatures? Perhaps we tell the people that they are the root of all evil and they have been causing all of their problems. That's why we can't have good hats? What are you going on about? Oh, I think what he means is that all our problems can be rooted to the sharks. Oh, one could even say that they prefer to eat people who don't work. Perhaps then people will get more jobs and put money into the economy. I've sold lesser to more intelligent people. I think he's trying to say something. What is he trying to say to us? Well, you don't have to be intelligent to know exactly that you're in it for yourself and you want something out of this, don't you? Your silence is deafening. <laughs> There's no city council this week, but 
MCPS had a board meeting where they talked a lot about Smart Schools 2020, uh, Graduation 2020, a lot of things about 2020 that was supposed to be a huge deal for MCPS, which turned into the uh, kind of taking a backseat to what COVID's all about. Um, but there's a lot of silver linings, uh, silver linings in this dark cloud that came upon uh, the COVID stay inside Zoom meetings for a lot of teachers. Uh, of course, uh, one of the things that moved forward is uh, Casey Ballou, uh, with uh, during public comment portion of the uh, uh, school board meeting. She's the Missoula Education Education Association president and middle school teacher locally here in Missoula and MCPS, and she's talking about what teachers of Missoula have been up to during these uh, hard times. Uh, we want to make sure that Missoula knows and understands that school buildings may be closed, but that school is still in session. Parents and students are still working hard. They're logging in, they're meeting virtually, they're learning, experimenting, reading, you know, growing their knowledge and understanding of important concepts. And staff members are also still hard at work. We're in and out of the buildings. We're planning, we're meeting virtually, not so much in person these days. We're designing lessons, we're closing down classrooms, we're taking online courses to make ourselves better teachers. We're working with our principals and our staffs to make plans for the coming weeks and the months past summer. Um, we're giving feedbacks to students on work that they've completed. We're checking in on students and families to make sure that they're okay. We're working. Teachers have been adjusting and working with kids and even more with parents to make sure their kids are getting a, their education and teachers are on their screens working hard for Missoula. You, if you, I mean, uh, like she was saying, you know, you've been seeing teachers kind of come and go and passing and all that stuff. They did a couple uh, uh, teacher parades where the teachers were in their car waving at the kids at their homes on their routes and telling people that they should join on the street to give support to the teachers. Um, but moving on to more about graduation, um, Superintendent Rob Washin talks about graduation. Where, because we've been talking about these um, ceremonies now for a couple weeks, um, we're being held to some pretty low numbers in terms of participation. In fact, uh, I was commenting to Hatton and Tracy today that the health department has stressed to me that anyone in attendance um, should either be a graduate or a guest or have some sort of job at the ceremony so we we really have to limit the number of people that are at the ceremonies due to the uh, crowd size restrictions so watchin said that celia swan will host their sunday the 31st at their school while willard will host thursday at 4 p.m at the washington grizzly stadium hellgate sentinel and big sky in that order will do it at 9 9 a.m 12 noon and 3 p.m um and they're going to be having a ticket and um, the kids um, who were told to show up at the school, pick up their uh, their tickets, their information and uh, and all that stuff. Um, so they've been getting emails, uh, some of the high school students, to uh, find out more information on what they're, they want the students to do. Um, the tickets also have uh, allotted parking lot deals. So they're told to be at a certain parking lot and a certain seating place as well and they're going to be distancing the students within there as well and also uh, talking on uh, a little bit more about um, what they're going to do within uh, the school is uh, let's see and uh, Rob Washington superintendent smoke and lengthen on how MCBS will host graduation while you while utilizing university ticket systems this is what he had to say this was also of great interest to the health department. They felt like it would provide some more level of safety because we would be able to trace where the guests were sitting in case there were um, a potential uh, spread of COVID-19, then we would, able to, we would be able to know essentially where the guests were sitting in the stadium and who might be sitting around them uh, relatively close. So. That, that was of great interest, I think, to the health department. And, and that also, by using the university and using their ticketing process, allowed us to do that. Part of this event will also allow easy access for tracking down folks who may have come into contact with possible COVID-19 infections. Uh, they have been work, MCPS has been working with Missoula City County Health Department to make sure this graduation come, uh, come true for parents and their graduates, while at the same time providing safety measures that align with uh, county, city, county health uh, 
principals moving forward with this, MC Best will also provide each of the kids with their own mask that reflects their school and will provide them to students. So here is uh, Rob Watson again with that. And we were able actually to secure some masks. So I'll show you an example of what the masks look like. So this is, uh, I'll show you the Sentinel one since Isaac was on the line. I think he's still on the line. So the masks um, will be given to all graduates. We'll ask the families to bring uh, their own masks or we'll have some disposable masks there for anybody that doesn't bring one. Um, I think that's it. I mean, that's the big stuff. I, I wanted to just mention that i um, really thankful to the University of Montana. They have been doing, you know, just great helping us with this. Um, as you can imagine, the University of Montana is also going through some furloughs and they have quite a few of their um, employees that have been furloughed. And so they're kind of working with a skeleton crew, not only at the Adams Center, but also at the stadium. And they've just been a, above and beyond to really help us through all this, the logistics. So really appreciative of the University of Montana. And all right. So now we're kind of uh, backtracking. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of doing this out of order. So we're going to be moving on. Um, one of the things um, that MCPS is saving money, uh, a big thing was transportation, heating costs for the buildings. And this is Pat McHugh, Executive Director of Business and Operations, and he talks about the money uh, for MCPS's budget. Um, very unusual this time of year, but we're under budget. It's, it makes sense given the uh, fact that we're uh, remote learning right now. So um, you'll see a number of areas that, that reflect that. Of course, in that whole meeting, um, Pat McHugh talks a little more descriptive overview that uh, reflects the cost that would be have been associated with the transportation, some overtime for custodial staff because janitors are working extra hours to wipe down MCPS's facilities for the sake of keeping policies with public health officials' guidelines. Uh, currently, Pat, Pat McHugh is looking for transportation for teachers, which happens to be in the budget that... Uh, for MCPS is currently looking into one of the questions is like there's some money that is put aside for teachers who've been traveling um, building use is also down which resulted in utility savings for the past few weeks but also uh, they don't know in terms of budget because a lot of the buildings are new buildings and uh, they've been updated for energy efficiency so they're trying to look into the budget on how to reflect that and so far there we're talking about the 2018-2019 budget and how trends are kind of adjusting and changing and one of the big things with the budget within mcps is the new smart schools 2020 which had to do with that uh big bond that passed a couple years ago uh, they can continue talking about the fiscal year and trying to predict the trends over the ways to see how mcps will prep for the new fiscal year uh the budget is discussed and approved in the summer months during the down times um doo -doo -doo. Of course, uh, they talked a little bit more about the new facilities in this meeting. Um, Tyson Watson hosts the meeting that shows off the new schools people voted on for a couple years back. This is a presentation on all the schools, pictures, um, just a nice representation of each of the schools that were opened here. And this is uh, Tyson Watson talking a little bit more about that. The overarching theme was the Smart Schools 2020 manual, um, but each school formed an education innovation team, which consisted of custodians and teachers and parent volunteers um, that helped uh, give input and define um, the smaller details, the color choices or uh, the general shape or where the front entry wanted to be located and, and all had significant amount of input um, while the project was being sculpted and designed. And so that's, uh, in my opinion, the main reason why you do see those unique personalities of each school. Um, Rather than going into more details about each of the school, I just want to talk to you about how MCPS built Willard from the ground up. They tore down the old building of Willard and created a new genetic ranking school to replace the Cold Spring schools. Those are one of the major uh, kind of deals. While a lot of couple schools like Rattlesnake School had uh, more of a, a very minimum outward change um, parking lot adjustments, they had major internal um, um, updates for sure to increase uh, flow and just kind of have that a new look to it as well. And you can look at it yourself. Um, MCAT shoots all the um, meetings. Um, so this was a Zoom meeting and MCAT did this live and it's live every second and fourth Tuesday of the month where they talk about um, policies and moving forward and trying to keep things moving um, during these times as well. Um, 
and I think that's where I kind of wanted to end it right there. I'm kind of doing this out of order, um, but for the most part, this is uh, kind of like what's happening. Uh, Big Sky High School is one of the last schools that will be updated. They're going to replace all the bleachers in the big gymnasium. There's big wooden bleachers. They're going to figure out a way to donate them to another place to kind of keep them in operations. Uh, but they were pretty much the extremely large uh, wooden bleachers that they've had since they opened a long time ago in 1980, which uh, Big Sky High School were celebrating 40 years of their uh uh, of their creation uh, just this last year. Um, so there's a lot of things happening with MCPS. If you're interested in watching this meeting and more information, go to mcpsmt.org or you can go to mcat.org to find more information about where um, uh, and when we do all these meetings for MCPS. It's on our channel 190 link. But without further ado, I do have a video I do want to show you guys um, before I wrap up my show. So here's uh, here's this. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today's Thursday, May 28th, and this is my daily briefing. We've had a total of 41 cases to date in Missoula. 39 of those were identified by testing and two were epi-linked. We've had 40 recoveries and one death and we currently have no cases in isolation and we're no longer monitoring any close contacts. The state of Montana has had a total of 485 cases with four new cases today. There have been 17 deaths statewide. So there's a few things that I want to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about prevention practices, um, testing for COVID-19, and our approaching tourism season. This morning we learned about four new cases in the state. Three of those were in Bighorn County and one was in Yellowstone County. These new cases are a really good reminder that we need to continue being diligent and vigilant for the health and safety of our state and also of our county. Remember that there are a handful of things that each of us can do to better protect ourselves and others while helping keep state case counts low. Let's revisit some of those practices as they're even more important now that we are slowly reopening the county at the same time as we're approaching summer tourism season. For instance, practices like frequent and thorough hand washing really does help to reduce COVID transmission. Remember that wearing a cloth face covering, sometimes that is easy, cost, something that's easy, cost effective, and yes, it's a little weird to get used to, but it's actually pretty effective at protecting others. The cloth mask reduces the chances of asymptomatic spread by keeping those viral droplets closer to home behind your mask. This is especially important when six foot spacing is really difficult to maintain in different settings from your home to the hills, to the grocery stores and everywhere else that you might be going where you're around a lot of people. And on that note, we want to try and keep your social circle small. It's exciting that we're moving into warmer summer months, and this is a beautiful time to be in Missoula, and it's a season when we all want to be out and about, being able to soak up that sun. Um, we want to encourage everyone to get outside and just recreate safely. This is a critical component of many people's physical and mental health practices, but we just want you to keep in mind um, and keep a mindful eye towards the number of people that you're continuing to see during our phased reopening. This helps the overall cause because the smaller your social circle is, the fewer possible close contacts in the future, meaning fewer cases and a much more manageable caseload for our contact tracing teams, public health nurses, and our overall healthcare infrastructure. So next I want to talk a little bit more about testing. Um, beyond our individual practices, we can also continue larger population health practices like increasing the reach of our county testing to get a better sense of what COVID looks like all across Missoula County. To this end, we first established a remote field site at the Missoula County Fairgrounds and this helped to expand testing outside of clinics and hospitals and reduces the burden of those organizations and improves our overall understanding of how much COVID we actually have in the county. Once the fairground site was up and running, we had the infrastructure established to expand testing to other parts of the county. Last week, we offered testing services by appointment in places like Lolo and Frenchtown. Next week, we're going to be offering testing in Lolo, Clinton, and Sealy Lake. We have a mobile testing van, public health nurses, and really friendly and skilled staff to ensure that the process from calling to book the appointment to screening for symptoms, visiting the site itself, and receiving those test results is as efficient and effective as possible. We'll be in Lolo on Tuesday, June 2nd, and in Clinton and Sealy Lake on Wednesday, June 3rd. So if you're a Missoula County resident or a frontline healthcare worker serving in Missoula County, and you're experiencing any COVID-like symptoms, even if they're really mild, please call one day in advance of the testing date to speak with the nurse about this testing opportunity. 
Um, you can call 258-INFO, that's 258-4636, to connect with a public health professional and get that appointment established. Additional information is also available on our department website and on our social media pages. So next I want to talk a little bit about tourism. As we really approach the summer tourism season, we know that our Missoula is a little gem that pe many people visit or pass through on their way to other great parts of our state like Glacier Park or Yellowstone. So let's just remain vigilant but, digil but diligent and hopeful. There are a few easy self-directed things that you can continue doing that will go a long way to keeping uh, Missoula case numbers low. So please just remember wear a cloth face covering when you're out in public, wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. And it is really important to try and keep your social circle small at this time. So we just wanna say thank you to everyone in Missoula County that is doing their part to um, help us keep our case counts low. So that's all I have for my daily briefing today. As always, you can follow me or subscribe to me on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Um, check out our Facebook page at Missoula City County Health Department. Um, you can also check out our website at missoula.co slash cvirus. And you can call 258-INFO if you would like to schedule a test, even if you're having very mild symptoms of COVID-19. Um, that number is 258-4636, and they can also answer any questions about COVID-19 that you might have. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, as we wrap up the rest of today, there's a lot of stuff that's happening, warmer weather, a lot of things that are uh, happening within the city of Missoula as we're going into the weekend. Graduation is going to be basically kicking off all next week, um, although University of Montana wasn't able to have that in-person graduation because a lot of their graduation happened a month ago when we were at the peak of our social distancing and isolation um, and self-quarantine. Uh, one of the things uh, that uh, MCPS is trying to do is trying to uh, go through graduation in a smart, uh, uh, positive approach. And they were very fortunate to not have to do eight separate um, uh, graduations, um, which was originally set to uh, be the Kettle House Amphitheater. And they're very grateful for all the people involved to help them move forward with this. So, um, I also wanted to mention that MCAT will be uh, kind of wrapping up their uh, their their days at their facility at the um, downtown, a former uh, Missoulian building at 500 North Higgins. We will be planning on moving into the new library, um, which uh, for the most part, for most of you are wondering when the new library will be open. They hope to be planned opening the new library and the new building sometime in August. So it's going to be quite a ways away before MCAT's even going to move in there. But if you want to still get in contact with MCAT, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. We won't have a physical facility for a lot of people to come to, but as soon as the new li library hits, we're going to be having a lot more public hours for a lot of people to be able to check out some of the new equipment that we've been getting in, while also providing uh, programs and um, um, opportunities for many organizations here in the uh, in the Missoula area to uh, gi give people a voice within the local community. So if you have a nonprofit, uh, a cause, a rally, um, anything that's happening in Missoula, you can contact us through our website at mcat.org. You can uh, request a program. So uh, the whole idea is that it's a media assistance grant. So if you are representative of a civic and nonprofit group, you can get MCAT to do a shoot for you guys as well. But we will try to uh, represent the guidelines of that as well. We're a relatively small crew, so we don't have to necessarily uh, worry about the major social distancing since MCAT has always kind of been a, uh, a proprietor of social distancing. We were social distancing way before it was cool. But, uh, but for the most part, we've been recording a lot of events and things that are happening within the city of Missoula, um, University of Montana programs as well. But if you are a group that really wants to figure out a way to get out and get in touch with the community, get in touch with us. And uh, you can get your uh, show on our channel, on our uh, social media pages. It's an opportunity for you to package a, a nice video for you guys and present it to the community. Um, we're at a very interesting crossroads, but MCAT is here to provide a connection for a lot of people who don't have the means to connect. So if you are interested, you can keep contact us through our website, MCAT. Dot org. You can email us mcat mcat.org or you can call us 542-6228. So 
take care and uh hope you guys have a wonderful weekend hello everybody <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to dude zoomed uh oh Ron, your frame rate is bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he's, he's gonna like glitch out like a lot jump in and jump out uh, so. Exactly. Oh, let's close my door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you should have seen, oh, exactly. seen the show. It's like, dude, I uh, just drew, with, uh, but we're wait. using the Zoom app to uh, interact with one another during these hard, difficult times. So now we're uh, zooming. Yes. Now we're zooming instead of drewing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and so the. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? It's so bad, man. It's so bad. I don't know how to fix this, man. Is it working? Am I here? Do exist? You're, you're kind of there. Yeah. Your audio is better than your video, that's for sure. Okay. Man, you're somewhere. That's 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 the thing that I'm hoping Whoa. right now. I don't know what's wrong. Your mouth is moving. Do it. <laughs> All right, let's get into the first suggestion. Why are you doing coin? Um, let's get into the first suggestion. I got a coin right here. Let's flip it. Oh hey, everybody, did I did I strip now? It sounds like <laughs> a robot. It sounds like a robot. Ron's robot. <laughs> oh. Whoa. He went away. Is, is, was there, He's gone. Is he a murder right now? Okay, I so think so. If you at home who don't know the rules, I'll go through it because I've seen this so many times and I've been the man behind the scenes for most of the Drew uh, shows. And the whole point of this is this, we're doing three rounds and each of us get five minutes to draw um, a suggestion and it's kind of like a blind suggestion. So we're going to uh, basically flip a coin to see who goes first, me or Rowan. Yes. New dead meme. Yeah, that was my suggestion. Dead meme <laughs> suggestion. All right. Well, it can be any dead meme. Any dead meme, as long as the meme is dead. Dead, dead meme, dead meme, dead meme. <laughs> what is this? Dead meme. Graham is dead gonna meme. have quite a time editing this. He, oh God, yeah. I, I kind of hope he just like makes Rowan extra glitchy. <laughs> he just he Demi. makes oh it God. ten times worse. <laughs> it just gets worse. Samsung. Like it's a Samsung. Impression and put it over every time he speaks. Uh, <laughs> um, so funny. Okay, so just so you guys know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw. Um, I, I think it's is it uh, the toad, the face toad meme oh, guy. Okay. Pepe? Pepe, yeah, I'm trying to draw oh, a frog. Pepe yeah. is a, yeah, is a dead, dead meme. He's, he's really dead. dead. Dude, Not on 4chan. They took him out and shot him. Like, it's so I dumb. I screen <laughs> just for a second, and it got so much worse. <laughs> I was using this whiteboard <laughs> flavor last saver. time. Oh, I, I, I know what it looks like now. It looks like if Nacho Libre was a frog. If, they, if Pepe was Nacho Libre. That's what it looks like. I don't know. I still think it looks like a Pope. Nacho Pepe. I salute. Nacho Pepe. He's <laughs> Nacho Pepe. <laughs> He's <laughs> Nacho <laughs> Pepe. <laughs> this is such a sophisticated Pepe. Really? Um, wow. What is that? What is that purple thing? Is that a glass? That's the or... dark crystal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love it. Because he had five more minutes to prepare what he was going to draw, and like, I didn't. <laughs> Are, you drawing pizza? Are you drawing pizza rat? Yes, he is. Look at that rat face. I love the face he's given. He's just like, I'm too drunk. This whole entire episode. Until now. <laughs> Splinter was just a young rat living in Manhattan. Oh God! <laughs> Everyone knew him as Pizza Rat, and then he was trained by his master Yoshi. Was it Yoshi? I don't know. You giving him nippies? That actually, ties <laughs> <Tyson. Not> this <laughs> one. <laughs> it's, it's, 
Mm, interesting. See, see, he's he says stuff, but it didn't, it didn't <laughs> no, come out I'm as pretending words. Like I understand what Rowan's talking about. In court, ex-convict. Oh, oh, I'm so mad you didn't take my suggestion. I'm so Neil. mad. <laughs> Give it the business. Okay, I've got to make. I'm just gonna draw it with a continuous line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to perfect it. Oh God, this is gonna. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. Already. You know, I probably Is that a fish? for this suggestion until, uh, until oh, there no, was it's an a plane. opportunity for better art. <laughs> for better art, yeah. <laughs> better art reasons. Oh my god, Neil. I could use my finger and I destroy Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Finger destroyer. That's right. Can use my finger right now. I with the with the test. <laughs> Ladies, Rowan single. He's the finger destroyer. No. Whoa! <laughs> he's not caught up with the. Uh, did I just need more? There he is. Oh, is, is that Al? Was that a banana? No, no. It's the flame from uh, in a uh, view. Huh. Wow. Is that a banana? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and the crowd goes silent. I'm gonna read my book. <laughs> and the crowd goes what is, what, What's going on? It? <laughs> what is just, this? Just admiring uh, this, uh... What is that? Oh, is that, a, is is that the that? propeller? This was on my desk and apparently it exploded. Okay, yeah, it's the plane's head, I see. Okay. Then oh, what okay. is but that? But I also got this. That's his, that's his tie. I, I am utterly confused. Over my hand. That's his tie? What is this? <laughs> what? Is that? that have it's you a multi purpose tie? tie. <laughs> have you seen one? The multi purpose tie. <laughs> that is not what they look like. His that hands are what, what is that? What is that? What is that on his arm? <laughs> His hand's a propeller. A president, but they're a popsicle. <laughs> I'm guessing it has to be one of those, like, bad popsicles that you get from, a, like, a street vendor. Hey, I am not... I'm not prejudiced against popsicles, okay? It's a... It's a, uh, popsicle of right? second, right? Popsicle? You okay, mean president, it doesn't have to be anyone specific. Out. Well, it is, obviously. Is That's that is that Clyde from Pac-Man? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, wrong game. <laughs> Maybe like an indent. Yep. Gotta have Classic. the indent. Gotta have the stick up the booty. And the booty. Yep. Make it big. Oh wow. Oh, getting political, are we? Oh wow. <laughs> How could you? What flavor is this popsicle, Scott? I would say flavor? Cheeto. Orange, <laughs> orange Cheeto flavor. Orange Cheeto with a slight, and also slight hint fruit. of hot sauce. Slight sense. Of... So there's no, there's no way there's hot juice. sauce in that. Kind of gives you a little tingle on the tongue that you hate, but you kind of go back for more. Did you say orange cream or orange dream? I said cream. There's uh, a different. There is a difference. Is yeah, there is one. One's. Uh, Dreamy and one's creamy. Lily, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan's face on that was so good. <laughs> Why are you giving him the tie, Pops? Because he's a president. It's called I Have More Time. It's our I president. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Time. Yes. I think you really nailed it. This popsicle looks like. He looks like a Dr. Seuss character. So he do be looking <laughs> chunky. He do. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like a poorly drawn Dr. Seuss character. <laughs> do oh, you no. do you lick the tongue? Do you lick? <laughs> yeah, do you have to lick it? The tongue <laughs> comes out. How many licks does it Is take to tongue? get to the center? How many licks does popsicle? it take to get to the end of the term? I thought that. <laughs> might... <laughs> that needs to I... be on a shirt. Oh! Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> He's a butt somebody, licker. Somebody, somebody cut off. Scott's time. Scott, you have. And that's time. <laughs>
Thank God. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. He's cheating. He's hey, cheating. 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 Call Cheater. the police. Call the police. Hey, Rowan, can you uh, can you clean my eyes? What? Can you clean my eyes with something? All right. Right. <laughs> Let me come over there, hold on. He's a popsicle, but he does the lock. He's a popsicle. I gotta He'll say that doesn't look like a job. popsicle, yo. He's a popsicle. Is this He'll Inky? He'll kill your family. He's a popsicle. He's a president. Is this Inky from Pac-Man? Oh, he's melting. No. Oh. He's supposed to be the president. He can't melt. What if he, he's this Oh, president, I already so. know who it is. He's not a crook. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> As soon he's as not he... a crook, and he didn't. He didn't. I... He didn't sweat the whole oh, time he was on television he against. Drew the right cheek. I I knew that it was. Okay, right. I didn't even see it as a cheek right, at right. first. I thought he was like going with an uru face. Who who is a little this? Bit better about no, my this, drawing now. This is like classic. Uh, I I'd say like Futurama style almost. Yeah. It almost feels like it. Hmm. Oh, oh god, he's really melting. <laughs> he's really melting. <laughs> I don't know, All of his... Yeah, he's... I feel uh, like he would be salty. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> sugar. Well, that's a Salt long time. Dough. Yeah. Mm, tastes like political Whoa. conspiracy. Whoa, <laughs> Rowan, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> the tie yeah. kind of... Uh, it, Drags behind him in his melted mess. <laughs> in his melted mess, he's just he's dripping all over the place. Sad man. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta draw a, a freaking American flag in the background or something. <laughs> <laughs> something that is just like a jet flying behind him or an eagle. It's gotta be. It's gotta be that good, good man. There it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Only four states? <laughs> yeah. The At only the ones that matter. Five. Wow. Original crook. so beautiful. I like that a lot. That's good. <laughs> I don't know which one I like better, honestly. I like Rowan's, personally. Um, but that booty lick, though. But the booty yeah, lick. I, I'm gonna vote for Scott on this one. Yay! I also put my vote in for Scott. For I also vote one. for Scott. Yeah, All right, I vote for Rowan, so... Well, you're Rowan the wrong way. Well, I do it think all goes... this entire oh, 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 I just oh. think Scott's is just so funny. Well, <laughs> Rowan takes the round, oh, God. Uh, all of the rounds, except for the last one. In except for that Scott last one. So, I wasn't able to join in. Okay. Sorry. The wind goes to Rowan. The entire world. The wind goes to Rowan. Oh, <clears throat> Rowan's running away. He's getting away from the kids. Oh my god, well, Rowan. I'm going, back to, I'm going back to the nether realm. Alright, so been... if you guys want to look at up me on social media, make sure to like my morning show, Wake Up Missoula. Uh, there you go. Yeah, what days? What wow. days is it air? It airs live on it. Well, pre tape now on MCAT uh, every Friday at 9 a.m. Wow. And if you okay. want to check out else? my Instagram, do Facebook, all that stuff. Don't. Just look up Wake Up Missoula and you'll find it. Rowan? Yes. Uh, yeah, row, rowboat. Some lovely hair you've glitched yeah. out there. No, just tell us about where we can find more information about you. <laughs> oh no, he's gone. <laughs> okay. You killed him. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh, there! Oh, he was there. Where can we find Josh at? Nowhere. I don't exist. I'm an AI in your computer. What, Neil? Where can we find you at? My house. Oh my God, Rowan! Where can we find you at? Thanks for coming, everybody. That's a that's a really good question. Where can we find him? <laughs> Such a good face to end on for Rowan too. Thanks, Rowan. Bye, Rowan. See you, you guys later. later. Thanks for us. And hopefully we will... Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Realized.